Hello everyone, Master Zero 1001 here, and in this update log video, we'll be going over some of the changes that have happened with Hardops 987 underscore 1 Francium. For the transition to Francium, we wanted things to be a lot more gentle compared to how we did things previously with Neodymium and Neodymium X, and especially with Mercury and Mercury X. Quite a bit of transitional work happened over the course of those releases, so we wanted this one to be a lot more gentle where we wouldn't break existing tutorial content, but we'd be able to continue to expand and continue to correct things and get things to be even more stable. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this video where we'll talk about some of the enhancements and changes you can be expecting with this latest update to Hard Ops. First and foremost, I'm happy to announce the support of local mode for every scroll. So that means you can go in, make a selection, press forward slash to go in local mode, and if you press Q and you go through every scroll, you can press A to keep shapes and append them to your selection, even inside of local mode. And this was something that was a bit of an oversight with the initial creation, but I'm happy to announce that we doubled back and got that taken care of. So that means that now local mode is supported with all of our bull recovery utilities. So we can press one, even in local mode, to just turn off the cutter collection. And if we press Alt W and switch over to hops tool, we can still hold control and just select and click in order to bring back shapes depending on our particular needs of what we're going for. In addition to also being able to support every scroll which will reset the cutter visibility in order for you to set visible the particular shapes that are relevant for the operation at hand. And of course you can right click to just go back to where you were before starting the operation. So just letting you know that every scroll now supports local mode for recalling cutters. So when it comes to two shape, using the hops button at the top of the 3D view, you can go to the star which represents our opt-ins. Opt-ins are controversial options that users may want to change between or alternate to get the most out of their experience. Here we'll see two shape where you can go to the classic version that started it all, V2 which is the current version that's the most interactive, and 1.5, the version that we created to be a little bit more lightweight that is kind of a revisit of the fundamentals, but also bringing back some of the uh, behaviors that we implement in V2, as well as expanding a little bit further. So we'll jump over to, uh, to Shape 1.5, and that means that inside your operations menu, there will now be an option called To Shape 1.5. To show this in action, we'll use box cutter and draw a box, press X to convert to a slice, and we'll select our slice and we'll press Q, O, T in order to jump to two shape, and we'll just hold control and roll the wheel in order to choose a different axis to place our shape. And new to this version of hard hops, you can press spacebar and bring up a selector menu where you can actually change the shape that you want to using a direct menu similar to exactly what we have for V2, but now we see that there's a version that's applicable to V1. Another interesting fact about to shape 1.5 is that it also supports edit mode selections. New to this version, it also now supports to shape 1.5. So I'm going to use box cutter, press control X and just draw a box. And we'll just select these two faces and just press Q, O, T in order to go to Q operations and to shape. But we'll just click it in this case. And here we have our box. We can press space bar to have a cylinder, press E to equalize, equalize the radius, control roll to choose what axis, move the mouse in order to choose which direction our cylinder is facing. We could even press one, two, three at the top of our keyboard in order to change the amount of segments that's happening with our cylinder all in real time while we're just messing around. So that's the beauty of using this version of two shape and now it even supports edit mode as you can see in this example. So what we'll do is select everything, press X and delete it, shift A, insert a lattice, and we're just going to move some points around. And the interesting thing about lattices is you could press Q and there's an option for two shape inside of the Q menu. And you can even two shape a lattice into a box or a circle or a plane, but you cannot use decap on it. So special care has been taken to make sure that an error isn't thrown up when using decap with lattices or any sort of strange operations like so. The other thing is that if we delete this and we were to bring in a curved path, we can just press E 
and just extrude this and have some fun uh, extruding this curve into 3D, creating a rather large shape just made of curves, something I actually do more frequently than uh, I'd like to admit. So we will just press Q and we also have an option here for two shape and we see that everything is placed on top because that's how I have it set up. But if we start scrolling through, we can see that we also support operations such as decap on curves, which is strange. We also support the ability to use convex hull to lo loft curves into solid forms, which is something I've been experimenting with and I find to be something interesting, but also random. As you see, this was a pretty random extrusion, but I could see how in a more, um, structure situation this could actually give us something controllable so just scrolling on just letting you know that special care has been taken to make sure that we support lattices and curves to the fullest extent that we're capable of just in case you're getting squirrely when it comes to using two shape 1.5 trying to push it to the limit The best way to showcase triangulate is to, of course, have some ingons present. So we will just perform a cut in the middle of these quad faces, basically making them all into ingons. And so now if we press Q and we go under add modifier and we hit triangulate, you can see a wireframe appear on the mesh that fades out, just giving you an indication of what has been done with triangulate just behind the scenes. So you don't have to always press alt V and look at wireframe for a moment and then press alt V and turn wireframe off again. The other thing is decimate. So if you were to press Q and you add a decimate modifier, it will clean up the geometry to the best of its ability using planar dissolve. Now, it will display that as well. So previously it would just do these things and just say that it did it, but there is no visual way of actually showing you what has actually happened to the geometry on a mesh level. So now that it's being displayed, it does make it a lot more intuitive to use triangulate and then go in and use decimate. However, if you use these in a conjunction situation like you're seeing here, you should probably go in and control click in order to add multiple versions. So here I am control clicking on them each time to just stack up decimates or uh, d decimates and triangulate. So, you know, we've done this just a couple of times over and over just to show the point. However, if I were to just press Q and shift click to go through a mod scroll, we can actually see myself going through iterations of these triangulates and decimates. So I might even add an option in the future to just show wireframe uh, on the fly whenever you're going through mod scroll, but that's a story for another day. With displacement, a small behavioral change is taking place over the course of this update. Very small, won't be anything major to you, the user. So normally I use this place by just going into it under add modifiers and then I'll roll the wheel forward to change it from X to Y to Z and then roll it forward for custom normal and then continue rolling it until I get to normal. Now, if you go into this place by pressing Q, you can roll the wheel backwards to immediately get to normal. And you might be wondering, well, why is that even important? So I'll just show a quick example. One thing that I like to do is bull bevels, which is something I've just been experimenting with and then using well to clean it up. So with these two faces, we'll perform a curve extract and then we'll just take this piece and perform a bevel and then we'll perform a solidification. And we'll select both of these, perform a difference. And we see how fast gives us this uh, type of result. And sometimes you actually want fast to work out because fast will uh, give you your optimal speed and performance instead of using exact, which just for the record, if we selected our main shape and we went under our Boolean helper and we changed it from fast to exact, you can see the result that exact would give us. However, let's actually try to make this work out with fast because it is also possible. We'll just press Q, go under add modifier and just choose this place, roll the wheel back once and then just a little bit of a movement and we now have this actually working both ways. So we can actually force a bevel in using Boolean to get in some places where we normally couldn't. And it's just a way I've been getting around on some handhelds lately. So more about that hopefully in a future video. Lately, I've been diving back into sculpt mode recently, and one of the things I've noticed is that whenever you're inside Dyn Topo mode, you're unable to use voxelization remesh. 
And so this was something that I aimed to deal with inside the Voxelize that shows up inside the Hops Q menu. If you're in Dine Topo and you choose Voxelize, it will exit you out of Dine Topo, perform the voxelization, and leave you right there for you to jump back in Dine Topo, which is something that I do all the time whenever I'm trying to go back and forth between levels of detail. Well, not back and forth, pretty much backwards. If I just want to go backwards with a more simplified deformable mesh that's a lot more easy going then that's when I use voxelization but whenever it comes to detailing and refining that's when I have Dine Topo. So with this update I'm happy to announce that now if you're in Dine Topo and you're working you can just press Q and bring up voxelize and just use it on the fly just like you would with decimate or any other operator. One of my favorite ways to work in Blender is kind of haphazardly where I just uh, grab two edges, press Control B, press C in order to clamp them in the middle, and we'll just perform some extrusions without giving any sort of thought to the type of geometry that we're creating in order to create a uh, particular shape. So we're just cutting things, beveling things, just expanding upon them, extruding. You know, nothing major, just doing our usual work in order to get the job done. So, you know, if I wanted to clean this geometry up to its most minimal state in order for me to perform Boolean operations, I would use something called Clean Mesh. Normally, I would go to Object Mode, and under Operations, I would just use Clean Mesh, and it would actually clean up the geometry, and we go back in Edit Mode, and we see that all the unneeded geometry is no longer there because it's just simplified to its most plainer, most simplicity. However, if you were to use it in edit mode, it would exit you back into object mode. So just letting you know that this version now has the improvement of you being able to use clean mesh in edit mode and it will keep you in edit mode. And same goes with using it in object mode. If you use it in object mode, it'll keep you in object mode, which was always the case. But when it came to edit mode and using clean mesh, it would actually put you in object mode so you could see the result. And then you would have to go back into edit mode, which was finally reported as, as a bug after all these years, so I'm happy to announce that it has been resolved. So I figured a nice way to end this would be with a uh, small impromptu demo, so we'll just take this cube, scale it S, Z, S, Y, and scale it in. Just get a nice scale going with it. Since we have box cutter going, we might as well take advantage of that, so we will Draw some cuts, but we will shift to live so we can grab this edge and this edge and press Control B and bevel them. And so far, so good. Alt X, and we'll mirror it on the Z. From here, we can just Alt scroll up to box, draw a box, and for some reason, I like drawing box and then pressing W, switch over to wedge. And from here, we start mirroring on the other side. And right now, the shape is fairly boxy, however, I'm quite confident that Hops is fully equipped with the tools to help you break the box formation rather quickly. So it is always a matter of choice if you want your shape to be a blocky panel or if you want to take it and make it something more. But of course, more is something that, you know, I got to put in quotations because what is more to me isn't always more to you. So for example, if I wanted to break this box, I would need to apply some modifiers. So I'm just going to alt click dice which we'll apply, do a smart apply off the bat, leaving us only with our weight at normal. And we'll just roll in some loops, but we'll press T in order to jump from this to twist, and we'll roll it into three. And then bring it, bring it in using mouse movement till we get it just right for a canister. And this is about right. And so from here, we can uh, really uh, get interesting with it. So what I'm gonna do is locate the array and we're gonna turn off merge. And we're also gonna remove weld because they're just not needed. And I'm gonna take a chance and run smart apply. And I assume the smart apply is gonna apply everything, but not get rid of the original or get rid of the uh, weighted normal at the end. So you see that weighted normal is the only modifier I need at this point. And really that that is all I need at this point. And the whole reason for uh, deleting those faces, which I actually did a little soon, is so that I could shift A, insert a cylinder. You know, shift A is the classic way 
to insert things, and I still find myself using it from time to time. However, two shapes um, finale, I believe, is the ability to um, be used without a selection. So that's something that I always talk about, and it's, it's just a ponder. I mean, nothing important with nothing serious with it, but just someday I would like to um, have its insertion capabilities expanded upon for neutral selection, but it's just a thought. So at this point, you think I would just go ahead and perform a Boolean and get this merged, but instead we're just going to first perform a sharpen and then roll the auto smooth back to get something a little nicer on the shading. But I just wanna show you some stuff that um, I experiment with in my personal work. So one of those is you know isolating areas like you see me doing and we'll just press shift H so all we're left with is our cylinder and before we even try the union of the cylinder I want to select this and because in my add-ons I have enabled the add-on called um, edit mesh tools which is just built into blender once you enable it you'll have an option to right click to be able to offset edges and so I actually spent a lot of time experimenting with this workflow in a manual fashion. And then from here, I can just um, control click on a line to get a line to this. It looks like for now, we'll need to unhide all the geometry, but we can just select the pieces that we want to keep and then shift H everything else. And first we'll just select this loop and under bullions, I'm just going to shift click knife to perform a knife project. And that's pretty much all we need out of that circle. If we press Alt H, everything else is fairly good to go. And so the next thing from here is we can select this shape and just press Control Alt Numpad Plus, and everything should be merged together nicely. And you might be wondering why I even bother with this sort of stuff in a Boolean workflow, but I'm always um, trying to study topological control and how that can assist in shading versus um, alternative ways that it can be done when it comes to controlling shading. Of course, you can just hack the shading outright, but there's a technique that I've always worked with where I just try to get in and understand a little bit more about the geometry and what's going on with it, like you see me doing here, where I'm just doing merges. But there's uh, certain importance areas that I definitely want to um, keep at the forefront of my mind as I'm working. But the more simplification that I get going on here, just the easier life will be. And it doesn't have to be a uh, very serious thing. Like um, I could be aiming to solve this with all quads, which will require that I begin redirecting things and doing things like so. You know, for example, let's pretend that the name of the game is all quad flow. So that means that the sacrifice is going to be happening on the outside of this line. But the whole point of doing a knife project before doing this operation is just to uh, kind of give myself a little bit of a buffer. It's just something I've been contemplating. I mean, someday maybe there will be a cut that will uh, knife project an outline prior to cutting it in order to assist with solving. But I feel that um, the ST Edit Mesh tool has a route it can go with uh, being a mesh solver. So. That is something that we are currently pursuing. So this area is beginning to get a little bit congested. Uh, we have a 32 round cylinder, which is already rather expensive. So we could make some hard decisions here. And by hard decisions, I mean, we're gonna need to apply here and we can actually slide this halfway, merge at last. And we'll see at the end, just how far we can get with this. I mean, what's crazy is that we actually can shift click mark and press X to go to dissolve and press one and just start removing points, press M jump to merge and we can just start sliding things around, uh, press X a couple of times until we get knife. Actually, we don't even need knife. What we need is our boy join joins just a beauty press X a couple of times until we get to dissolve. In fact, you know, don't be surprised if a uh, little space bar comes to this thing in the future, a little space bar action, you know, besides apply. So let's locate join. And right here, we want to uh, go to merge. 
and just move these. So you can see how, you know, our goal to reduce the amount of keystrokes for performing some of these operations definitely is reduced with this kind of all-in-one mini tool, even though um, it is a little mini tool, meaning I could right click and, and just end my entire career and it'll change the flow of my day and join just isn't taking right there. Uh, let's jump over to merge and try that. Sorry, might have had a uh, lapse in judgment. In fact, join has such a crazy name when you think about it um, compared to what it does. You know, not complaining. These are blender terms that we're going with here. We'll take these to join it. And, you know, we need a little slide action in here as well. Sometimes I just can't stop thinking about, we'll undo that. Luckily we're able to undo inside of the tool, which I find to be quite astonishing. Not that I'm the type of person who would trust a strange uh, undo in the middle of a modal, but it's come through for me uh, so many times. In fact, if we can make it all the way around, that I would call this a uh, successful usage of the tool in which I would report back to the creator you know, that I had a uh, very successful adventure and that there's no complaints to um, report at this time, which is sometimes nice to tell tell the guys, you know, it's like, I actually have no complaints. Congratulations. Continue um, sleeping in coffins. So we'll just join these and things are starting to get a little hairy at this point. And I was thinking about exiting um, you know, while we're ahead and just uh, cashing out. But, you know, that's not the point here. We're really trying to uh, get this geometry under control. Um, every time I do this, I'm just like, wow, this is what you get from Booleans. Um, I get so many questions of people asking, you know, uh, what kind of geometry can you expect from Booleans? And, you know, probably link them this moment in the video because this is the, um, the honest truth of Booleans is that you're going to be needing to um, get skilled in the art of cleanup and just making geometric choices. So at this point, I'm going to press spacebar, meaning that I won the game. And if we tab out and look at this, we can see that we kind of destroyed this area a little bit. So we can get that back by just doing a little bit of hardening. In fact, on this side, we have this all quad flow going all the way around which terminates here, which is interesting. I knew that there might have been a double point earlier when we were messing with this, so it's always nice to um, locate those and just kind of do the edge test over and over. In fact, we can turn on uh, auto merge and just really start cleaning up the city of crime. and our loop continues and our loop continues and it's interesting to see how it's just one invisible vert in most places that will just end your journey in fact for this area we can just terminate early and then just do a junction across just to uh, be nice and select two points press j select that one Control x and we are just about finished so, you know, on all models, I always try to just have an area where I just choose to go through a little bit of a battle, just topologically, just to um, get myself warmed up. But these near misses, they're really something, let me tell you guys. So, let's say we did want to make this area just make it. I could just select this, select this, press J, which you see that it jumped across in a looping formation. So we'll just press K and just directly knife kind of uh, breaking our whole game here. But now we're aiming to uh, get some shading that that holds up. So let's just see what we're able to get here. We'll select this one and control click on the other side. Hard market and that will actually suffice except for doubles that will not suffice. In fact, why are we working on two sides when we can just Alt X 
and use something like modify or apply, which will merit no holds barred, but still keep everything exactly as we want it in edit mode. Um, I do plan to do a video at some point talking about uh, mod apply in depth because it is one of my favorite ways to work. However, the behavior of symmetry is also quite interesting. So they're both there for a reason is probably the easiest way to put it. And so here we've worked so hard to just put this simple cylinder in here. Uh, we didn't even have to work so hard. We could have used weld and all sorts of stuff to make it work. However, I just know that when it comes to the point of promoting this to be a bevel mesh, it will just work so easy. So here we are adding that piece and we'll just mirror that to the bottom using modifier apply. And because we've already deformed this, but we deleted the pieces that aren't there, we're going to actually need to use radial array, but we want to roll it back to three and everything just works out except that these no longer need to be here. So we can just unmark those, delete the faces. And now this whole mesh is fairly manifold aside from that issue. So there's a couple of ways we could deal with it. We can mess with merge inside of radial array. And that's my favorite way to do things as far as merging a classic, or we could have added a weld at the end. So continuing on with our, you know, happy little energy canister here. Uh, the next thing I want to do is shift a at a plane and we'll just RX and we'll put a loop directly down the middle, select these two points and just press X to delete it. And we'll just move this up to the top, but we'll press control shift tab to bring up the uh, snap to menu. And we want to snap it precisely to the top of these vertices. So I'm just going to grab this edge and move it in precisely to that one. And you're probably wondering, what am I going to do? Well, a solenoid is what I'm going to do. Um, you've seen me make a lot of solenoids over the course of all these videos. So um, I do, I had plans to actually show what they're for. And this is definitely one of them. So we'll just start with a um, general bevel, nothing major. And we will just choose to screw it. And that looks good. And we can just sharpen that. And so if we go in and modify the bevel, we can choose how tight this is, but we can also press shift P. And if you've been saving bevel profiles at this point, you would have various bevel profiles that you would be able to screw through. Uh, I do plan to someday add a collection of these to hops, but really there's a ton of videos where I talk about how you can make these and I want users to be creating them because I know if I just supplied a pack, that would just be the end of it. So, Definitely get in there and play with some bevel profiles. It's um, one of the newer features of Blender. Um, as they continue improving upon bevel and mirror, it's just a gift that keeps on giving. And I'm forever grateful for every step forward. So we'll go ahead and add a bevel to this. And then we could select this and this and press Alt-X. But we don't want to modify or apply. We can press X to reset the mirror to its default. And then we want to keep the Z, which means we'll mirror to the Z below. And voila, we've now made our energy canister. You know, nothing major, it's just a simple little asset, just something fun, you know. In fact, you know, while we're talking about fun, let's shift A at a circle and let's S scale the circle. And we'll look at it from top view and select this point and press control plus a couple of times until we're over our wedge area. And we can just press control I, get rid of everything. And there's a couple of different ways you can approach uh, making pipes and things in Blender and getting a nice uh, rotation or a nice bevel happening. One of my favorite ways for some reason is to work with the geometry somewhat simple like you see here and then just bevel it and then put a subdivision on it and then under mesh tools, convert that into a curve using curve extract and it's pretty much good to go. And that's the end of that. So. At this point, we can actually convert this to a mesh. And then by control clicking uh, radial array, we can radial array it around a 3D cursor, basically adding a nice little uh, hook piece in here. And we could go a little bit further. I mean, uh, another thing I also like talking about is smart apply, which if you shift click smart apply, it'll make a duplicate of the mesh, which will allow you to just select something. and just work on it as if um, it's been applied, but it's a derived mesh. And really you should delete the mesh ASAP because it's sitting on top of your real mesh. So you see how I have things selected on one side of it, but not on the other. Well, I can press Alt X, Alt scroll to modify or apply, 
and then when I use modifier apply, it will actually um, have the selection done on the other side. And that's just a behavior I've noticed with mirror that isn't present on any of the other mirror tools like symmetry and stuff. I mean, I'm probably going to check into having the mode kept afterwards. You know, I'm pretty sure after uh, some of the previous stuff we were talking about, that's probably something that could be improved with mirror as well. Keeping it in edit mode when you use it in edit mode or at least returning you to edit mode. So for this, we will convert it to mesh and under mesh tools, we will just radial array on the Z, select both of these. And we didn't want to modify or apply because that means that this story is done. And, you know, for the purposes of this video, it's fine. But, you know, let's get weird. Um, let's say that we wanted this thing, but we don't want all this modifier baggage. So if we extract it in edit mode, it's not going to work out. So if we uh, shift click smart apply, <clears throat> we can uh, select this loop and it won't select any of the other loops. And we're just going to control I, delete everything associated with it, select the bottom control plus to grow it. Uh, because I'm on the desktop, I don't have to, um, you know, shift click mark and then control scroll in order to um, adjust it. But just know that I use that all the time on the laptop and I'm so grateful for its existence every time. And I think I'm going to check into maybe seeing about having an additive selective mode done for that. Uh, that, that behavior feels a little off, but here I am uh, thinking about development all the time. I, I'm trying to stop. My New Year's resolution is to chill out a little bit. Some would say that I'm a, I'm tool crazy. So we'll bring this in all the way. Why not? Just select everything, right click, and just merge by distance. And we want to make sure that there's no extra garbage in the selection. And it appears that there is because this panel was hidden so long ago and we just need to get rid of it. So now we are ready. So we'll bring it in, put a level of sub D on it, and then just curve extract. And really there's no wrong way to do your piping as long as you get your piping done and that you're using hard opt. I'm just kidding. But as long as you get your piping done, that's all that matters. We'll select both of these, Alt X, and we'll just sit, press X to reset. And so far, so good with our canister. And the best part is that if we wanted to, we could select only a certain region of this and dice it and have it even more deformable because right now we have our loops allowing us to deform it on the Z, but we're not gonna be able to bow it out, which is something I always do with these canisters. So. In order to deal with that, um, I've just been kind of pondering in the back of my mind over the course of this video as I'm talking to you guys, hopefully distracting y'all. But what I need to do is select this, grow it, um, and get rid of anything that doesn't need to be diced like this stuff. And one of the features I never talk about is using dice in a localized region. Um, someone once mentioned in the comments how dice needs the ability to rotate, you know, completely true. Um, in the meantime, we do have um, two dice. I mean, right now you see me using it in edit mode on a selection, which is also very nice. Uh, if I wanted to, I could have an object in object mode and it'll dice this object, but place it on this object using that region or rotation. But in this case, we need something a lot more specialized, a lot more focused, and a lot more precise on the geometry because we don't want to dice anything that isn't what is selected, what is not selected. So we're working our way through knife project. How are you going to treat us? That is how knife project is going to treat us. Excellent. One moment. Technical problems happen, but let's see how Blender does at overcoming them. So we'll recover our auto save, which I'd never saved. And here we are right where we left off. In fact, no harm, no foul. And because we were able to survive just crashing, thank you, Blender, we will power save this. I'll just call this canister. This year, instead of boxes, we'll be talking about different objects, but we actually want to dice this, but we don't want any of the beef that we just had. In fact, let's try that again. I just gotta see. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a curious soul. I have to know, why did it happen? Why did it happen? 
and also no shame in crashing in the middle of a video. Uh, it always allows me to talk about Blender's autosave capabilities, which are just uh, superb. So Q, dice, and we're looking at it on the Z, and more likely it's gonna crash right here. We should cancel it, save it, dice it, because if we know it's gonna crash, we should just, oh yeah, Blender, you're not gonna crash, huh? So now we have this very nice diced area. You know, I'm just gonna roll with it now as if I intended this. Like, yeah, Blender's not gonna crash, you guys, but just saying, if you're using Blender 2.92, just know that it's like tough. For the uh, stinger at the beginning of the video, Blender was crashing all throughout that. So eventually I had to go back to the uh, LTS version. I was like, thank you, LTS. You know something else is that this bar takes up too much room and we can't really wrap up this video just yet. I mean, we can, I could just, in fact, I see that we're at the uh, half hour mark. So we probably should. Um, that means my girlfriend's gonna be showing back up or the cat's gonna come back in here and make a big ruckus like she did earlier. And I'm just hiding empties because I just hate seeing them. In fact, I'll press Alt H, press M. Are we in local mode the whole time? Wow. All right, so I've been in local mode the whole time too. Maybe could have been adding to the crash, but you know what? Impressive. We've just been in local mode the whole time. I'm gonna have to rewatch the recording and see how long I was in local mode, but sorry, getting off topic. So what I want to do at this point is have everything selected and we're just going to try adding a lattice and we'll put a couple of segments on the Z and by segments, I mean one, and we'll select these segments in the middle and just stretch this out. So it looks a little bit like a kegerator and then we'll just press Q and just add more segments to the lattice to really smooth it out. And so now this is our shape. So something a little bit more, um, oblong. However, um, one of the things I like about uh, the new modifier scroll is that if you need to recall an object like lattice, you can just shift click it and it will just bring it back for you. So I am going to simplify this lattice and we'll bring it down. And for this, we'll actually bring the lattice up above mirror. And it looks like there is no mirror. So let's alt text add a mirror and we also want to do the same thing to this so if we collapse our modifiers we can see that we need our lattice before the mirror so everything takes place in the right area and now we can uh, have some fun with this form without compromising it so you know the point of this was to just get in and just show you guys how you know you could just have a little fun with hard ops with just making a little uh, kind of kegerator energy canister and then of course you select everything and control click on material scroll to just give it all the materials in the world all the materials it ever wanted and we can't even see what they are here we are so this material needs a rescroll till we find something a little more acceptable this one, re-scroll. And here we are looking at something a little bit uh, more akin to what I would like to render. Even though this area looks a little devastated, I'm pretty sure we could baby this to perfection. But the whole point of this was to just talk about uh, workflows and end this on a good note. You know, I want all these demos to have a segment of me uh, kind of demonstrating the tools, just like I used to do in classic demos. Just know that I could select this piece at any time. Uh, control scroll back to the first one, press shift P and just scroll through endless combinations of different types of tops on this thing. And one in three of them are going to look sick. You know, some of these are like the letters M and X that I made in the, in the graph, which are pretty funny. Sometimes they actually look, look pretty good on an environment. But there we are swapping it out to something else. And we could even grab these and press GZ and move them up and just continue reforming this thing. In fact, if we want to take this even further, we can shift D, duplicate it. And we want to turn off the mirror, turn off the lattice. They're not needed where we're going. R, four, five, press period. We'll go back to medium point because we don't need 3D cursors, our rotation point. And the whole point was to make sure that our circle is still looking good. And we could take this little, little thing and just radial array it. 
However, in order to do this, we would need to begin applying some modifiers. So we should talk about applying the screw. In fact, for this one time, let's try just applying it without actually applying the right modifiers in order. And we see that that did not work out. It just did not. So let's change this to be Let's just remove it. You know, I had to sit there and ponder it for a moment. Like, wow, what could I have done to this? And we'll just put a new bevel in here, scroll it up once so it doesn't look like that. And now that we have this, we can just adjust a bevel. We can adjust our micro bevel, which doesn't do anything. Control roll the wheel up one. And we can press shift P and just begin scrolling through profiles until we get something that looks acceptable. However, we will need to turn off the second one in order to ensure that we don't get anything weird happening. In fact, I accidentally um, set custom profile on the wrong one. So we're going to need to remove that bevel. Look at me trying to rush to the end to start making all sorts of um, beginner mistakes. Sorry about that, viewers. So now we can select this and control click radial array and we see that things aren't just right. So once we apply our rotation, then we can actually radial array this the way that we want to in this particular situation. So by selecting both of them, we can now mirror this also below. And so we've now filled these holes with some little solenoid pieces that we just made on the fly with just a bevel plane. And then we can still go in here and adjust the bevel change your profile to whatever we want it to be, and it will just take place throughout the rest of the model. In fact, to fix this last bevel, uh, because we did, we did mess it up, you know, let's be honest. I'm just holding control and scrolling. Let's try that again. This is the one we want, and we want to press, let's see, control P to return it back. And let's turn it back on and just lower our angle to something a little more acceptable. Press one. And here we are looking at our final results. Sorry about that. You know, just wanted to uh, end that on a positive note. The other thing is that we can grab this plate in the middle and just assign a blank material on it. And the thing about material scroll too is that whatever material you have selected is the one that you will scroll through. So if I were to press alt M and control click on this, let's try that again. Now I'm changing the material in index two and I can press C if I want to begin injecting this with color or press T to begin changing its type. But blank material is always my favorite. And so I could even go to the first blank material, press Alt M, control click, and begin scrolling through combinations with this as well to change it to whatever I'd like it to be. So to wrap this up, what we can do is just select everything and click on manage. So first we'll just neutral click it to just unify. And then we can control click it to evict everything that isn't essential to this. And let's come out of this mode that we're in. And we also want to evict that too. I don't know why that didn't get evicted. I guess we'll leave them behind for now. And this collection that we're in is just canister. So we can right click new collection. Maybe we want to place our new collection in the um, base area, not inside a freaking collection. So now we can just shift a collection instance, canister, GZ1, and just place a couple of these around. You know, nothing major, just gotta present these canisters as if they're sitting somewhere. You know, sometimes it's also nice to rotate them and try to lay them on each other, but definitely watch out for those intersections. So now I can just grab these three and move them to the center, shift A bring in a plane and we'll just place a blank material on that and first alt vv just to find the right environment so just something basic and then alt vb in order to scroll through blank light configuration so just like that we have set up and rend began rendering and even gave a quick lighting rig to our uh, basic canisters so from here we can deselect everything press q add a camera and if your camera is not right you can always just move your empty up 
even scale the empty to just mess around with your camera, which is uh, just a fun way to uh, get things under control. However, I also like to um, ensure that my center is exactly where I want. And from here, we can actually mark a depth of field target like this canister, lower an depth of field around it. And whenever we go in here and begin scrolling or uh, begin playing the timeline, we could see the uh, animation taking place. If you want it to take place longer, under the Q menu and settings, under frame range options, just by clicking this, you can have an F9 to change how big you want your frame range to be, but just using it without even changing anything, it'll set your frame range to 6,000, which will help you get a little bit closer to what you're probably wanting if you're bringing it up in the first place. So I use it all the time just to set my frame range to 6,000. So to close it up, I will just control click the logo and scroll up my paddle and just play a little pong. And with that, we can uh, wrap up this video. And so hopefully, um, you guys enjoy this latest update. There's a couple of things I, of course, wanted to talk about, but we'll save that for pickup content in the future. But with that, we'll wrap this up, and I hope everyone's enjoying Hard Up 00987, Francium. So I was just watching this thing rotate, um, you know, as I was about to export the video, and I figured I could come back in and actually do something about the way that it's sitting. So let's just take a look at this real quick. So this one is like super balanced in a way that it would just never happen. So let's see if we can get in and just adjust this, you know, nothing, um, nothing perfect unless we want to do a simulation, but you know, I feel we can get a little bit better than that. So it's not an eyesore when we're watching it pass by. So we don't want to penetrate anything too bad. You know, these two things looping look, look kind of cool for this one. We'll just rotate it over just a tad, you know, wireframe mode looks quite nice when you get to looking at it, you know, um, for a bunch of meshes made with booleans, you know. So we'll press R, X, X, uh, just to rotate on its local X axis, R, X, X, and get that right. And we'll rotate this as well. And let's look at this um, transitioning by, by in the camera again. And I think before I got distracted by Pong, you know, don't add Tetris to hops. That would just be the end. I would never <laughs> be paying attention to what's going in the background. But the, you know, the idea with um, having the animation play and being able to play Pong is uh, kind of a throwback to this game, Phantom Vision on PS2 that I'm obsessed with where you blow up fireworks. Like there's all this stuff happening in the background, but you're just focusing on these uh, fireworks to impress the people below. Just um, it was a really interesting concept for a game. There hasn't been a game since. Um, PS5 has no launch games, um, might I add. So um, we'll press home over the timeline in order to see the whole thing. And we're just rotating around looking at things. And it is rotated over on that thing, which helps it make a little bit more sense. And you know what's crazy is we can still modify this even after the fact. I mean, I know this video's over. Uh, I'm terrible, but let's select this. And let's also enable our selection so we can see what's going on. And we'll just go under bevel and control scroll up and press shift P to enable profile scroll. And we just want to find something with a hollow center up top. I mean, we can cut something hollow in the center and really all these are perfectly acceptable. Um, for example, let's uh, go with this one. Also, I love how these profiles come in with perfectly the amount of segments because I remember doing these all quite randomly when I was making them. So we'll go with that one and then just grab both of these and just move them back down. And we'll select this and shift click Smart Apply, which will give us a duplicate. And we'll select that and delete everything else but what we had selected. Just real fast because, I don't know. <laughs> just since uh, Smart Apply duplicate has been a thing, I've just worked on duplicates much faster now because I just don't want to. I get them confused with the real meshes. So now we have some pulsing lights. Of course, we can't leave out pulsing lights uh, in a tutorial. In fact, we can do the same things with this. Um, 
What's interesting is we could tap into edit mode and just control click on curve extract, which will give us curves in all the areas. And I just want to bring this in about there and we can just turn these into curves and we'll give this the same emissive material completing this thing and we'll jump back to collection one. And if we look at this, you know, these frames where the floor is like super duper bright, I just don't know about those. Also depth of field is just way too out of control, especially with the object looking us in the face. So you always got to watch it with depth of field. If you're around point one, you know, you probably got some problems. So let's continue looking at this. And another thing that I also didn't talk about, uh, and I should have is the scale of this thing. You know, we have utilities that will tell you the scale. So let's just select everything, uh, go under operations and choose accu shape. And this thing is three meters tall. So I'm gonna need to see what that is in feet. Oh, that's under impaired. 10 feet tall. All right, so 10 feet tall is a canister that'll never be able to be carried by a man. Um, in all honesty, the height of this thing is probably about two feet. It's like a two foot tall canister. So we could try using lattice for this. However, I'm going to just press E. Well, not E. Shift E, I believe. Shift E to toggle exit, adding an empty. So instead of scaling it down using a lattice, it'll scale it down using an empty. And we click. And now the object has been scaled down. However, we did not get our lattice in there, which is also important. So uh, what I can do is um, we'll click on this, bring up, uh, bring up modifier scroll and just control click lattice to bring or uh, shift click lattice to bring back the lattice. And we'll just parent this to this object just for now. I know it's kind of weird, but it'll um, work out for us. So let's just hide that. We'll select everything again. Bring up uh, AccuShape, Shift E. We're specifying that this thing is two feet tall, indicating that it can be carried by a man. And if we press spacebar, We've now shrunken it down, and if we press Alt-H, we could see that our lattice was um, scaled down to fit it as well. So, you know, there might be a time when AccuShape will check for recursively um, object-related objects and grab those two in order to uh, do the transformation, but we've definitely messed up um, what we have on frame number one. So let's just Alt-G place these. If you don't um, have your scale right, this is what will happen to you. You'll be coming back at the end, readjusting your render scene in order to have your uh, depth of field be accurate because your scale is off. So this is something that I've gotten used to doing as well, especially for my Patreon files, just um, double checking Aki scale and making sure everything's to scale um, for kit bashing purposes. Just a uh, little fun extra you can do with hops now that um, has become more and more integral to my life. So sorry for extending this video uh, on so long by talking about these uh, itty bitty shapes, but we see that this object is much smaller because of um, what we've done, but this is for the better. And we'll even raise the camera up just a little bit, jump back into rendered mode and no harm, no foul. In fact, I'm gonna control shift S and we'll save this as canister one underscore one. I always use underscores whenever I'm going deeper in my file systems, but now we can see that things are looking a little bit better. In fact, we can actually change the environment just pressing Alt V P and I'll just um, shift scroll through environments until I find one that uh, particularly works for me. Maybe something like that. And then I can press Alt V for blank lights and we could scroll through the blank lights until we get something more acceptable you can also see that the camera's depth of field is a little bit a little bit back to being out of control and that's because our scale has been improved so we just bring that back to something more reasonable and now we are looking at a much better 
result than what we had previously. Um, I was a little bit hackish and lazy when it came towards jumping to the conclusion, but now that we came in and got everything refined to scale, um, hopefully you should be able to see it all the way down to the reflections and depth of field and the way that the camera behaves. It's just important to work to scale and hopefully I can um, continue improving upon that going forward in future contents to try to drill better habits into you guys. So my apologies for that, but of course always keep it conceptual, but whenever it matters, get it down to scale. So with that, I'll wrap up this video. Sorry for ranting. 10 minutes extra. I'll see you guys next time. Hey, you know what would be crazy is if I didn't end the video, if I came back in and just kept modeling some more. So, you know, let's have a little bit more fun before we actually wrap up this video. And by have fun, I mean we'll select this mesh and shift click smart apply because smart apply is just OP. However, we do want to uh, run a sharpen on it so that way when we select in face mode, we don't get the interior faces. We'll just press control I and get rid of everything else. And how much do we actually need? Um, I can pretty much guarantee for what I'm thinking of doing at the very end. We don't even need that much. Um, that's about it. And for this, uh, I'm going to shift S, save the, save the file, even though I don't have doubt about it crashing. And we're going to use knife with circle and view grid isn't something that actually works in box cutter per se but is enabled because i do want this to definitely be a thing in the future so view grid is something that you know we know that there's bugs with it however you know not to transition over to box cutter talk but there is a new grid system coming um we're always in and in, in trying to improve systems that people um, don't find satisfactory so you know, before we um, even jump to the next step, let's um, just get rid of some of these near misses. Why not? Alt X, symmetry, and symmetry will just symmetrize and be done, no holds barred. And before we even do anything, let's just select everything, or actually let's select nothing, and we'll just perform a dice. And we have diced that pretty good. We'll uh, control one, uh, put a sub D on it, and we'll just click on cloth and hit play. And from here, we can uh, start adding pressure, adding more shrink to this, depending on how much sag we want, which uh, we don't want a lot of sag. Sag looks a little terrible. So instead, we'll raise our subdiv amount, not through keyframing it, misclick. What a weird place to put uh, keyframing things. But we'll roll with it. And the reason it looks so bad is because auto smooths on. It inherited that from its master that we uh, took it from but we can uh, cont control click on subdivision to add a new subdivision just on top of that to just kind of get things looking nice. And that's really as nice as it's gonna look. I mean, we could get in here and just keep playing with our settings, you know, adjust our shrink, uh, hold shift and scrub over it. You know, we could roll a lot more sag in it if we want some uh, kind of granny's curtains or get in and begin playing with the settings. But one of the main things you probably uh, notice whenever you um, use cloth on a non-manifold piece of mesh is that we will make a vertex group painting all the edges for you. So there's no need to ask about that. Uh, just wanted to do a segment actually talking about that one particular question I received. And so we'll apply to sub D, then we'll apply to cloth, which makes it all work out. And for material, we're just going to shift click blank material to give it a glass material. And this is our result. So we see that it kind of penetrates into the surface a little bit. For that, I'm just going to put a displace on it, roll the wheel back once, and move the mouse to get it to something a little more acceptable. I use normal just a lot more than I'd like to admit. And for something like this, uh, I'm just going to select everything and then select a boundary loop. And we're just going to deselect everything else. And we probably should have 
put a ring of protection on the inside but it's too late for that now we're living in the future so we'll have to um, just extrude out and put a material on it and hopefully that material is real enough to be seen let's see what it looks like in render mode and let's see what it looks like uh, in our main collection it almost looks a little uh, ghastly like uh, not real maybe I should get out while I'm ahead but that isn't the, um, the style that I work so what if we wanted to even fill in that hole well you don't even have to ask first we want to uh, radial array it around to the other three sections so we'll control click to radial array that and that will work and we'll just shift D duplicate this thing like as if uh, it didn't belong to anyone and let's just get rid of the mirror won't be needing it and we'll just bring this down and place it in our happy little hole that we made you know perfection is a key at this point uh, a double uh, video extension at this point of um, just continuing to talk after the update log is long over you know welcome to hops tv i'll be your host master zeon and so for this we will um, control click on radial array and we see that it just destroys everything so we could go through the same rigmarole that we went through previously however it'd probably be easier to select this mod and apply it select this mod and also apply it and there's a couple of better ways we could have done that uh, for example if we did modifier scroll we could just shift click on those two check boxes and that will just get rid of it for us and then from here we can just uh, control click our radial array and we have it radial arrayed around um, try saying that 10 times fast and if we look at our shape now we have something looking like some uh, baby bottles but if we let this play we now have our canisters with ceram wrap to um, basically hold paperwork or excess fluid leakage or to be plugged up in order to recharge or pump air into the sacks or whatever the case may be but with that I can now truly wrap up this video and I'll see you guys next time